Hello, my name is Mike Driscoll, and today I'm going to talk about functions in Python. So a function is a reusable piece of code. Anytime you find yourself writing co the same code multiple times, that code should probably go into a function. What you're going to learn in this particular tutorial is how to create a function, how to call the function, how to pass arguments. I'm also going to talk a little bit about type hinting, um, the arguments that go into a function. Uh, we'll learn about passing keyword arguments. We'll learn about required and default arguments. And you'll also learn about star args and star star key args, or kw args. Um, the last two things you'll learn are positional only arguments and scope. That's a lot to cover, so let's get going. All right, so to create a function, it must start with the keyword def or def, which is kind of short for define. That is fo followed by the def, you write the name of the function, two parentheses, and a colon. Next, you indent one or more lines of code under the function to form what is known as a function block. Let's take a look. Here is an empty function. You'll note that in Python, depending on your editor, it will usually highlight that this is a keyword, def, or define. My function is the name of the function, uh, and these last three letters are all required. You need an open and a close parenthesis and a colon to show that you've ended uh, the function definition, which is what this first line here is. And then underneath the function definition, you have one or more lines of code um, that will do something for you. In this case, I just put the password in there. You could use an ellipsis, which is three dots, or you could even use like a, a print string or something there. All right, so empty functions are kind of boring. Let's uh, learn how to call a function. And now that we have a function, we need to make it do something. So let's do that first. In this case, we'll create this function, and we will call it. I'm not going to do it quite yet, though. But this function, well, um, still is still done the same way at the beginning, but now we're going to have it print out something to standard out. Um, and we could try to run it. Uh, if you hit, if you try to run it, nothing will actually get printed out. So we actually have to call it. To call the function, you use the same function name. You just say my function, and then you have um, the two parentheses at the end. This tells Python that you want to call the function. If I call it here, it will print out hello from my function. So most functions aren't um, don't don't just take are just plain like this. You have to be able to pass arguments to them, or they're not very reusable. So let's talk about passing in arguments. In this case, we'll create a function called welcome, so def welcome, and we'll give it an argument that we want to pass to it. In this case, we're going to call it argument name. Now, when we call it, it'll print out welcome and the name um, variable, basically. So if we run this code, it should say welcome Mike. We could have it say welcome Toby. You could run it with any, any name in here, welcome Jane, if you wanted to. This makes the code reusable because we can pass in a variable to the function. What about return values? What is a return value? Well, a return value is what comes back out of the function. Um, so you may want to get, you may want to do some computations or some other uh, work with your function, and you want to get the result out of it. Right now, this welcome function isn't returning anything, or is it? Let's try running this and find out. We will set the return value equal to welcome Tony and see if we get anything out of it. Oh, I have a little mistake in my code. Let's see if we can figure out what's wrong here. Ah, so it looks like the mistake is I need another quote at the very end. So let's add that and rerun this. So here we can see welcome Tony is still printed out, and the return value is none. What that means is that Python will always return some value from a function, if even if you don't specify what that return value should be. In this case, if you don't respond, if you don't tell Python what to do, it will always return none. So let's talk about um, type hinting your arguments. To type hint an argument, um, or was the type hinting code was first added in Python 3.5. Um, let's take a look at how this might uh, work. We rewrite the last example and we'll say what's going to happen. So def welcome to add a type hint, you do in an argument, you do colon and then the type. So we know that name is going to be a string or a stra. And then to tell it what the return value of the function will be, use this kind of an arrow character. 
and we know that it's going to return none because we're not going to specify a return value. Um, the cool thing about type hinting is that it tells you kind of self in a self-documenting way what your function or code is doing. The bad thing about it is that Python doesn't enforce it in any way. So you could actually pass whatever you want to your code. So, you know, it's got pros and cons. It's really, it's really nice for uh, type hinting or, or being able to annotate your code and know what's supposed to happen. But unless you enforce it with an external tool like MyPy, um, it is still, Python is still a dynamic language. So it's up to you about what you want to do here. So, you know, so I can show you that it's not being enforced because we can uh, add a return 5 here. We're telling Python, or we're saying up here in our type hinting that it's going to return none. But now we have a return value of 5, which means that we're returning an integer. So this should actually be updated to say int, not none. But Python doesn't care. It's going to run this code regardless of what I say the return value should be. Now, if you're using an IDE, an integrated development environment, like PyCharm or Wing or VS Code, it'll probably underline this uh, code in your IDE and say, hey, you're not returning the right uh, type. And then you'll know to fix that. But just know that Python doesn't enforce this. All right. So let's talk about passing keyword arguments next. A keyword argument is specified by passing in a named argument, also known as a keyword argument. So a, a keyword argument, uh, well, let's start with this first. So first things first, we have name, which is a standard argument. And you can see, see that right here, that um, string, it's a string, and then we have age, and it's an integer, and it defaults to 15. If we run this code, Welcome Mike. You can see it puts it in there. And you can tell that I didn't pass in um, anything extra here. I didn't tell it what my age was. It just defaulted to 15. So that's known as a default argument. But now let's try to run it without a default argument. So now we will set, we will use named arguments. So we'll say age equals 12, name equals Mike. That's what I mean by a named argument or a keyword argument. This is the keyword name. This is the keyword age. So if you run this, uh, Python doesn't care what order it's in either. So you can see I'm calling welcome and the age and name are out of order. This doesn't work if I were to just put in, you know, Mike and 12 because it's not going to know what I'm trying to do here. If I try to run that, it's going to pop things in differently. So let's say we want 12 here and we enter that. You know, it can't tell what I'm trying to do it, what I'm trying to do here, because I'm not specifying uh, which argument is which. But if I say this is my name and this is my age, then it'll put the uh, the variables or the parameters into the correct in the correct order. So let's talk a little bit about required and default arguments. You may have already figured this out just by looking at my previous examples. But a default argument is a handy way to make your function callable with less arguments, whereas required arguments are ones that you have to pass in to the function for the function to execute. So here we have x and y. x doesn't have a default value, so it is required. y does have a default value of 5. So that allows me to say I'll multiply 5, and it's going to run. And multiply 6, it's going to run. However, it's a, before I go to that extra slide, let's try running it without any arguments. Here we are told with a type error that multiply requires one positional argument, or, or required argument. So you have to pass in at least one argument for this code to work. So if I rerun it, it works with you know one argument passed in. Of course, you can go ahead and pass in two arguments if you want to. So it's really up to you how you want to do it. All right, let's talk about star args and star star keywords. Python um, supports the number of any number of arguments or keyword arguments. What does that mean exactly? We're going to find out now. You can use this special syntax in your functions. Star args for an arbitrary number of arguments. Star star keywords is an arbitrary number of keyword arguments. It's a lot easier to see uh, it in action. So let's look at some code. 
Here I say I'm going to pass in any number of arguments. If I run this, you can see that because I'm using star args, it'll accept three arguments, even though I don't specify that here. In fact, I can add more arguments, and it'll keep running happily because it'll accept any number of arguments passed to this function because I have told it this is an arbitrary number of arguments that it'll accept. All right. Um, you can also tell it that you want to only you want to have one required argument, and then after that, it can be any number of arguments. So let's try running this, and you can see that required now is equal to Mike, and a number of other arguments that come in go into star args. So let's go ahead and say this, and now we can see it's got one, two, three. Um, what happens if we just delete everything? we're going to get our type error that still says we have a required argument. So Mike is definitely required. So if we run that, or you know, you run it with whatever, you can run it with a blank string, um, you're still passing in a required argument, and the, the star args can be actually empty, because it can be arbitrary. It can be zero to any number of arguments. Now let's try adding an infinite number of keyword arguments. All right, so now we have any number of keyword arguments, star star keywords. Let's see if this works. Whoops. Uh, any keyword arguments, our function uh, takes zero positional arguments, or zero required arguments, but three were given. So these are positional arguments. That doesn't work. We're supposed to be passing in keyword arguments. So a keyword argument is where you say something equals something else. So one equals one, two equals two. These our keyword arguments. And as you can see, when we do that, Python is happy. We could say um, name equals Mike here too. And it would keep adding more and more keyword arguments to it. So you can't run it um, with required arguments because we don't have them specified in this particular example. All right, so now let's inspect a function that can look at all of the arguments, star args and star star keywords, and just kind of look through and figure out what's going on here. So here we pass in one, two, three, and then we pass in two values uh, that are keyword arguments. What do we get out? Star args returns a tuple. Star star keywords returns a dictionary. This kind of tells us something interesting about how Python works. Does that mean that you can pass tuples and dicks to a function directly? Well, let's find out. Let's create a tuple, and let's create a dictionary, and we'll just try passing in the tuple, because, you know, right now we can take, it'll take in one, uh, zero or more keyword arguments. Well, that looks like it works. Awesome. So, the arguments were one, two, and three. It printed those out. You can see it's a tuple, and it's happy. And we didn't pass in any keyword arguments, so that is empty, just like you'd expect. All right, so let's try passing in a dictionary and a tuple. If we run this, you can see that args has our tuple and a dictionary. Well, that's not right. We thought the keyword arguments would go in to keyword keywords, and it doesn't work that way. The reason that it doesn't work that way is that Python doesn't accept Python lets you pass anything in to a, into a function, including another function. So that can be an argument. You can pass a dictionary in as an argument, or a tuple, or a list. Python doesn't care. So how do we pass it a dictionary then? One way to do it is to use the same notation, star tuple, star star my dict. If we do it this way, then we're just passing our tuple in as our args, and our dictionary in as keyword arguments. And it works the way you want it to work. And it gets printed out the correct way. So if you want to pass a dictionary in as keyword arguments, just remember you need to use the double star to make it work correctly. And if you want to pass in a tuple of uh, items for arguments to a function, you still need to use the star there as well. OK, so Python also supports positional-only parameters. What does that mean? In Python 3.8, they added this new feature known as positional-only parameters. These use a very special syntax to tell Python that some parameters have to be positional and some have to be keyword. Let's take a look. So you can see here the forward slash means that we have some positional uh, items in this. And, and star is also a way to determine if it's a positional only 
or a keyword, I mean a keyword only. So these, these two are positional. This is a keyword down here at the end. Let's try to run this, uh, this, uh, this weird looking function. If we run it, it says positional got some positional only arguments passed as keyword arguments. Oops, that doesn't work. So what we tried to do here is we tried to say name equals Mike. That is a keyword argument, and this one requires us to pass in other other things. Um, let's look at another example. So Mike will go to name, 17 will go to age, 2 will go to A, B equals 3, keyword equals test. I wonder if this will work. Oh, we have a a, a word in here that doesn't make sense. Let's try changing that to just key. Aha! That's what we needed to do. So these first two are positional only. And then we have A and B, which are keyword arguments, star, and then another key. So you can just like play around with that. Sometimes it's useful. If you'd like to learn more, I do recommend you check out PEP 570. It goes into all the details about how this all works. All right, the last topic we're going to talk about is scope. Scope tells the programming language what variables or functions are available to them. So let's take a look at this. If we have name outside of the function, and then we create a function and try to print the name, we are going to get a traceback. Let's make this a little bit smaller so we can see it all. All right, welcome does a traceback because uh, it expects us to pass in a name. If we pass in a name, we get um, Nick as correct, welcome Nick as we should because we're actually passing it in. So this name is called local scope to this function. It has no knowledge of the name outside of the function right now, anyway. You can make it know about outside uh, variable names by using the keyword global. So let's say we want to make global B. This, this, is, this is a little bit different example, but we're, we're going to make it global. So global B, that means that B equals 4 now. And now, because we made B global, this other function can access B as well. Isn't that kind of weird? Um, let's make this a little bit smaller so we can see the output. Oh, weird. It's not showing the output for me. Well, anyway, if you run this code, um, you can see that it works the way as in it's intended to work. And you can run add and subtract, and it'll actually use both of those. Um, I'm going to actually show you, because it's being kind of goofy right now. So here you can see that add and subtract are being able to be run because we made it global. Now, if we got rid of this global, uh, subtract would throw an error because B would no longer exist, and they would give you the same type error that we saw above when we tried to run uh, welcome without passing in a name. So just keep that in mind when you start playing around with this sort of thing. Because it, it, it can trip you up. Also, for the most part, you almost never use global. Global is a nice keyword. It can be handy in very, very small edge cases. But for the most part, you don't need to use it. There are better, better ways to pass around a variable or just use a class instead. All right. So wrapping up, in this uh, tutorial, you learned how to create a function, how to call a function, how to pass arguments. You also learned a little bit about type hinting. We didn't do a deep dive into that, but now you know the basics um, for type hinting the arguments to a function at least. Uh, we learned about how to pass keyword arguments to a function, and you also got to learn about required and default arguments. Finally, we have three more things to cover. We covered uh, star args and star star key args, which is how you pass in a an arbitrary number of arguments or an arbitrary number of keyword arguments. We uh, covered positional only arguments, and finally we covered scope. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time, and I hope you all join me for my next video.